Today's project is an one piece cone shaped digit jar. I always love working on closed form like this. They offer so many possibilities for creativity. You may have seen some of my previous one piece pottery videos each with different techniques depending on the shape. Today we are focusing on the cone shape using a simple yet effective method. I'm using one kilogram of stoneware buff clay on a small throwing bat. This bat made of six millimeter MDF is attached to the wheel using a thin layer of clay to secure it in place. To start, I form the clay into the cone shape while ensuring the density is even and centered. Using both hands, I squeeze the bottom of the clay and shift the edge of my palms upwards. My left hand is slightly higher than the right hand, creating a spiral form that naturally brings the clay up. Now I use the edge of my right palm to push the pinnacle from the five o'clock position towards the 10 o'clock position, while my left hand helps maintain the clay's shape. Once the clay is ready, it's time to create the base disc, which will be the bottom of our pot. I keep the edge of my right hand's palm flat and gently press the top of the clay, while my left hand maintains the side wall's shape. For this pot's base, I need it to be around 14 cm which is roughly the size of my hand plus three fingers. Once the base reaches the desired size, I make a center hole using my right middle finger with support from my left fingers. I leave about 5 mm of thickness at the bottom, then put my middle finger up along the wall of the clay. Next, I slide my right hand's fingertip along the bottom towards myself while my left hand holds the base steady. A wooden rib is used to compress the bottom and set the internal size 13 cm which is twice the rib plus three centimeter. Now the base is complete. It's time to stretch the wall of the pot. I use my right ring finger to press against the bottom of the wall, while my left middle finger applies pressure from the opposite side. This technique creates a thinner and taller clay wall. To ensure firmness, I compress the edge of the clay from three directions. Since the pot is cone-shaped, I stretch the wall inwards. I apply the same stretching technique but with a bit of extra force from my right hand. If there are any small lumps or imperfections at the edge, I carefully cut them off using a needle. It is good to have a habit to compress the edge each time after the action.
I can still put my hand inside the pot, so I give it another round of stretching. I interlock both thumbs to create a two-hand tool. Now it's time to close the top. I remove any excess water using a sponge and clean the internal surface. To close the top, I shape both hands into a diamond shape and gently squeeze the pot while sliding my hands up simultaneously. Once my hands reach the top, I keep my left hand in position to hold it steady, while my right hand lightly pinches the edge as the clay gathers at the top. I repeat this action a few times to ensure a smooth wall at the top. It's important to maintain the same thickness of clay throughout. To maintain the even thickness, I need to stretch the top clay more. The design of this pot is a straight cone shape. One piece offers endless possibilities for creativity. It's a truly fun method to work with. Now let's focus on closing the top. I want to leave a ball knob on the top. I can either add a small sculpture on it or create a hole to thread a string through. I clean the surface for a better dry. I clean the bottom of the pot and trim it. This helps in achieving a clean circular shape, which is essential for later step like trimming. I use the strings to separate the pot from the bud later. Also, don't forget to make small vent holes with a needle to release any trapped air inside the pot, otherwise the pot will crack. I left the pot overnight to dry until it reached the leather hard stage. To prevent the knob from drying too quickly, I covered it with a little origami hat. First, I attached the pot securely to the wheel using water and skimmed clay for extra stability. Using a loop tool, I quickly reduced the thickness of the wall, ensuring an even surface. If there are any points sticking out, I carefully trim them off to create a straight line. I place a straight edge against the pot and find the point where it leaves the pot. Then trim that point. I repeat this process a few times until I'm satisfied with the overall shape and smoothness.
After creating a straight line, I lightly polish the surface using a plastic card. For hard to reach area, like the top part, I use a bamboo chopstick as a smaller tool. Next, I mark the lead line. Now, the surface is finished. I separate the pot from the wheel. To achieve the good finish, I clean the edge first before sliding a metal kidney between the pot and the wheel. Here comes the fun part. It's time to separate the lid from the base. The technique used for lid joints depends on the pot shape. In this case, it's an interlocking lid. I make cuts in three points and align them on one side to easily find the matching points. Using a thin blade, I carefully cut along the rest of the line to separate the lid. Finally, I trim the concealed foot ring of the pot. Since this pot is quite tall, I cut the lid first. Using a tall chuck can be challenging, so I prefer to position my hands lower for better control. To make the pickup easier, I trim the edge at an angle. I create a small center hole to rest my finger for stability and then trim the circles. The bottom of the pot is designed to have a concealed foot ring. It can be a flat polished bottom as the pot is not for hot liquid. I prefer less contact surface so I've chosen the concealed style. The reason I trim the circles first is to avoid creating waves in the trimming surface. Trimming a wide surface with a flat wire tool often causes the wire to catch the clay, resulting in a wavy surface. By trimming circles first, I can minimize this issue. After trimming, I polish the bottom using a plastic card. This step not only adds a finishing touch, but also helps prevent the occurrence of S cracks, which can be common in pottery. At this point, one piece is complete. The interlocking lid as an element of uniqueness to the design, and the concealed foot ring gives it a sleek and polished appearance.